no, 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 no. Oh, hell no. That is horrifying. Oh my god. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Mr. Plague and welcome to a reaction video. So, um, some of you might be wondering, hey, where's the game? What what are you playing today? Um, well, today I decided to do something a little bit different since usually my usual formula is just, you know, playing a scary game, playing through it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But this time I decided to do something a little bit different, mainly because I have had an interest in something called analog horror. Now some of you might know what analog horror is already, but for those who don't know, it's a type of genre of filming based on basically certain like curiosities, mysteries, enigmas, certain things that are put into VHS and stuff like that, but that is made mysterious, ominous, om om ominous, ominous, all that type of stuff, and VHS analog horror has mainly become a thing of popularity in YouTube mainly because it has become something that many many people make content about mainly here what we're seeing today Vita Carnus now Vita Carnus is actually a series that I've been following along for a while because I actually am interested in this and uh, well well I have seen some of it I haven't actually seen everything about it so I actually wanted to react to it with you guys so if you guys want to keep seeing these type of videos, if you want me to react to any other things, any other type of analog horrors, any type of um, VHS like horror videos, leave a comment down below. I was thinking about uh, the FNAF one since I do know that FNAF VHS tapes are really, really good. So we might check that out someday. If you guys want that, leave a comment down below. But for now, we'll be reacting to Vita Carnus, which is made by this person right here, Dar Darian, Darian, Darian? I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I'm really sorry, but Darian over here uh, has actually let out these VHS recordings of different types of um, creatures that we have here, like meat, snake, crawl, trimming, all that type of stuff. Some of it I already know, like this I already know a little bit, but uh, we're actually going to be reacting to the full footage, the living meat research documentary. So without further ado, I guess we should just jump right into it. Also, if you like this video, hey, give it a like, and hey, maybe you can subscribe if you'd like to. We're almost at 1,000 subscribers, so if you'd like to help me get to that goal, I promise y'all a special for 1,000 subscribers. If you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video, hit that bell notification. Alrighty, let's see what Vita Carnus is all about. Classified material. Federal law provides severe civil and criminal penalties for the unauthorized viewing of this footage. Any reproduction, distribution, or display of this video is prohibited. The possession of this footage may lead into investigation and detention. If released from custody, the apprehended will face a penalty of $500,000. Alright, so I don't think people really want... ...like this being seen, so let's see what it's all about. Why is it so secretive? On planet Earth, life has thrived for millions of years. Mm -hmm. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish nice. in all types of environments. From barren wastes to lush forests, life can be found. Okay. Earth has homed these creatures since the dawn of life itself. Only until very recently, things have changed. Oh. New life forms have appeared all around the globe and completely changing. My man, I don't think these are new life forms. I think these are ticks. Mainly the size of fucking countries. Look at the size of these things. Oh, well, but uh, it's obviously a diagram depicting like how many like where they are and everything. So obviously I know. But what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? I mean, is that a fucking tick? Look at that one just hiding in the background, just like, hey, how you doing? I'm also here. I'm having all sneaky here. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself. That is why we, at National Living Meat Research, have been studying these new species, trying to help educate everyone about these creatures and their wondrous ways of life. Huh, okay. First, what are these new life forms? Good question. What Since their explosive arrival across the globe in 1931, there has oh. been much debate on what these newcomers are, and where they came from. Are they extraterrestrials coming to invade Earth? Or are they demons who come from hell to purge humanity? Whoa, okay, that's that's a big jump. Okay, but you know, 
Some people might think, you know, oh, maybe there's some species that evolved throughout, you know, time and maybe they're, you know, like have been here for so long that we haven't noticed them. No, 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 no. The first thing to think about is either they're aliens or they're fucking demons. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, that, that makes sense. What? Like, you telling me they haven't seen it until 1930? You kidding me, right? <laughs> that's that's got to be crazy. From what our scientists have discovered, no. No. The origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. We don't know why or how, but one thing is for certain, Earth is now their home. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle tissue, organs, and bones. They greatly resemble animals with no skin, or store-bought meat. Because of these characteristics, they have been named accordingly as Vita Carnis. Vita Carnis. So isn't that, um... Okay, so I, I know a little bit of uh, language here and there, but Vita Carnis is, um... Latin, isn't it? For, um, living meat. Could Vita... Vita is... Vida, Vida, which is um, life in, in Spanish, and carnes, which is Latin for carne, which is um, meat in, in, in Spanish. So that means it's, well, it makes sense, you know, li living meat, you know, that it all makes sense now. Huh. The carne species consume decaying organic matter, but their main diet is composed of raw meat, not including their carnes relatives. So like plants, the carnies so only appear in places where there is an abundance of crawl, which okay. leads to the first creature of the carnies species, the crawl. Here we go. The crawl is a growth of meaty tendrils that closely Ooh, resemble the small okay. intestine, the only difference being the dark red coloration. Yeah, so wait, 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 hold on, let's, let's check this out again. So here we can see a little bit of it. We can see the crawl anatomy, which... Beautiful diagram, I might say, you know, beautiful diagram. I have never seen such a professional diagram by someone. Just simply take a picture and slap it on the slideshow. Why not? But, um, yeah, here we see a little bit of the crawl, which is, I guess you can say the fucking, um, I guess you can say it's the primary form of Vita Carnis. I guess you can say, yeah, I guess you can call it. Looks like, um... It looks like a fucked up branch, if you ask me. It looks like a type of, um, like a branch with veins on it. Like, I, I, when I look at it, because I've seen this, but when I look at it, I think of, like, veins. Like, it looks veiny and stuff. And they did say it is a resemblance to meat. Like, you can even send, like, blood vessels and shit like here. Like, like I don't know what the hell is that. I, I, I guess I'll explain right now, so let's see. These tendrils grow in a similar pattern as vines, mold, or fungi. Hmm. A primary stem structure uh, is the host of divisions of other, smaller oh, I branches, was right. I and was each right. tendril contains a variety of veins, arteries, and other similar organs used to transport nutrients absorbed from its surroundings. Okay, so the meat plant, the meat plant has veins. Thank you. Thank the you. ends <laughs> of these tendrils are equipped with organelles used to absorb water and organic matter necessary for growth. The source of these organic materials is mainly found in dirt and soil on surrounding surfaces. Ooh, Using its hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. Oh, so it's like yeah, it's like vines and shit, like moss that yeah, like it said, fungi, moss and stuff that grows around. Like you can see it on a log, on the on a house, bro. Bro, if I woke up, if I was the person owning that house and I woke up, walked around and I just saw this. I'd burn the fucking house down. I'd fucking call everything on this house, bro. I'd fucking destroy it before getting it anywhere near that house. I don't know who who is in there. I don't know what's in there. I am bringing down that whole fucking house. Hell no. Using its root-like tendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Like Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. Using a sophisticated oh. form of photosynthesis, the dark pigmentation of the smaller branches is ideal for absorbing sunlight, and therefore allowing solar energy to fuel the crawl's growth. Huh. So it is like a plant. Because of its efficiency, it thrives in almost all types of environments, easily allowing it to spread across the world, 
and can be found pretty much anywhere. Ooh, so this is a whole wild... Its recent inclusion in the ecosystem has caused many major changes in nature's balance. Ooh, okay. One may assume that the crawl's presence may outcompete any other competitors, but Makes due sense. to its unique life cycle, where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient-rich compost, all forms of life seemingly flourish instead. Oh. The crawl's abundance grants plenty of nourishment to all animals, from plants feeding on the decayed crawl, herbivores thriving on increased plant population, and carnivores feeding on both the abundant prey, and are able to eat the crawl as well. Oh, so, okay, that makes sense, actually. So it, it, it has its own, like, life cycle. It's not like, you know, it's not like how many things, like, how many people, like, uh, bring certain new creatures or monsters into the world. It's not like, boom, they're here. How are they here? How are they not gone extinct yet? How are they still alive? Uh, who cares? They're just here. No, this actually has, like, a, a type of life cycle. Like, it gives energy, takes energy, and it all goes into a cycle. It's a little cog in a, in a cog wheel, you know, in a lot of cogs. And animals can also eat it. That's really... Actually, that's pretty impressive, too. Because it makes sense, you know? It's meat, so carnivores would be able to eat the meat plant. That's, that's what I'm gonna call it, the meat plant, the meaty plant. Just get a, get a good steak from the meat plant, you know? Hey, yo, what what you get this what you get this steak from? Oh, uh, you know, I, I I grilled them out. Oh, you you got your own farm? No, the meat plant. <laughs> Don't do not go near the meat plant, get, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh. the presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and consumed by the crawl, and the cycle begins again. Mm. Okay. This form of symbiosis leads to an environment where all populations thrive. Huh. Humanity also uses the crawl to our advantage. Hmm? How so? Because of the supernatural rate of growth and its richness whoa, in nutrients, whoa, 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 it has hold been on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, 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 that looks like a slaughterhouse. Ooh, no. Hold on a second. What was this? What was this? Here we go. Radio tower overgrown with crawl. Oh, so this just like against the what the spokesperson just said about like humanity benefiting from like crawl. This kind of like shows that there is also drawbacks like the radio tower overgrown with crawl. Can't read what, what it says right there. It, it, um, it's too blurry. Someone can read that out. You know, let me know in the comments down below. But huh, here we have a little image, read newspaper. Huh. So that's interesting. Because it did say, like, it um, it grows like a fungus, but it's a type of plant as well. Like, it, it it thrives like a plant. It has photosynthesis and everything. So I wonder, like, does it have consciousness? Does it have, like, sentience, like a plant? Not like a plant, but like like a smart being. Like, you know, like an animal. But it's, it's also pretty awesome, like I say so. Like, this is pretty creative, too. This is not like just, like... Oh, there's living meat. No, it's actually really creative, too. Like, this person, Darion, has gone really far and beyond to make this, like, almost feel real. Like, this could this could feel real. If it was something real, it, it would feel like it. All right, let's keep seeing what we got. Its richness in nutrients, it has been sustainably cultivated oh. into domestic farms. The crawl is harvested and processed into fertilizer, which greatly increases oh. crop yield and quality. Oh, so we can make it into a fertilizer. The crawl may also be used as a food source for humans, and reliably so. But due to its unkindly appearance and taste, it has yet to reach cuisine standards. <laughs> yeah, fuck no. Who the fuck wants vain for, like, a fucking five-star meal? Like, I, I can see a fucking, like, five Michelin restaurant over here, like, fucking... Let's say a famous decorated chef, not pointing fingers to anyone, just saying like, oh, some like guy named Rum Rum Gamzy just coming up and just saying like, hey, you, uh, here we go, the special of today, it's, um, um, vain. I can, uh, can I, can I get some salt with it, please? No. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want vain for dinner, breakfast, anywhere near me, hell no. The crawl also plays a very important role in the next creatures that we have been studying. Mm, here we go. Sometimes, in a crawl-populated environment, a node of meat may develop on one of the branches, 
This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism and go to live on as an independent animal. Ooh. This leads us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are the trimmings. Whoa, 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 hold on. Trimming. Wait, Ingabus Carnus. Ignavus Car. Okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. What the fuck? Oh. Oh, here we go. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom. The kingdom was ruled by a king, I want to say, a king and a king. That uh, a king and a queen and the prince. Okay. The royal family where. I don't know what that says either. A lot of this is blurry. I don't know. I don't know why it's so blurry, but we can see here that um, there was a kingdom ruled by a prince, king, queen, so royal family that uh, like to discover new places and learn something. Okay, so that's that's odd. Why is this here? Seems kind of odd to just randomly put that there, but um, huh? I guess that has to do with something about like lore about this? Maybe a story that derived from, like, the Vita Carnus something? Who knows? That's kind of odd, but I, I guess we can see what happens next. Maybe it, like, it's a story type thing, so maybe we can find other ones? Is there a... Okay, well, I guess we'll find out in a bit. The trimmings. Trimming. Okay. Ignavis Carnus. are small animals that Ooh, resemble skin what raccoons. the fuck is that face, my dude? Body, round head, small eyes, nose and ear holes, oh. and then a gape mouth. They are also equipped with a diversity of limbs. Oh, you don't All say. All individual it's trimmings that thing, are unique, the little teeth each with a different thing. body shape, number of limbs, and other characteristics. Oh, also the One it's thing they all share in common is that they are made mostly of meat tissue, and are a maximum of 20 centimeters in length, no larger oh, than a basketball. <laughs> its life it starts with its separation from the crawl. It will wonder to find anything that is edible and able to consume. Hmm. Although it is an omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimmings are almost entirely scavengers. Their oh. diet consists of rotting plants and meat, including, but not limited to, fruits, vegetables, roots, seeds, insects, and deceased animals. Huh, so it's like a... Although like its a, appearance uh, is on... Uh, oh, oh, hell no. Nah. I do not want to see this thing in the middle of the night. Can you fucking imagine? You're just going up... You're just going down to your kitchen in the middle of the night. You just want to grab a snack. You just hear the fucking, like, something fall down. You fucking grab a flashlight, turn it on. And this thing meets your eye? Ugh, hell no. Nah. Fuck no, I do not ever want to come... It, anywhere near close that thing so it's okay so it's an omnivore that's mainly like scavenger so that means that's kind of like a possum i mean it depends i mean it, I mean, it kind of looks like i mean ugh, it kind of looks like a raccoon could it be like a raccoon or something ugh. it can also eat like meat and everything i wonder can it be aggressive Slightly, it is a cowardly creature, only oh. fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Oh, because of so its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making oh, wow. it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. Wow, so it's literally Naturally, its population would eventually die out. Is not Whoa, hold on a second. Hold on a second, there was something there. There was something there. You can't lie to me. I saw something right there. Oh, here we go. Mass trimming infestation? Estimated 400 plus trimmings gathered under a large abandoned satellite dish. Huh, wait, we can kind of read what else it says right there. The press do... The presence do... I, I don't know what else it says, but right here, estimated 400... Okay, so... Is it like rats? Like, you know how rats are at the bottom of the food chain? Like, is it like that that, you know... They die out. They they die out really quickly. However, they reproduce like astronomically fast, so that way the like kin can live on. Wonder. That's that's pretty. That's pretty cool and terrifying at the same time. Because if these things were like be aggressive, they could be terrifying. <laughs> uh, I wonder if like ah uh, okay. Let's let's see what else goes on. 
The crawl constantly produces a large quantity of trimming notes, keeping up their numbers. Huh. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is abundant crawl. Makes sense. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around seven months, having wow. a maximum lifespan of two to four years. Okay, so not that long. They can die out. Although real quick. they are plentiful, humanity has no proper way to implement trimmings into society. Their overabundance Ooh. has even considered them pests. Uh, Due to them digging through trash uh, and making hell no. noise at night. Do you really want that thing? Besides like, all you? of this, some people still keep trimmings <laughs> as pets. <laughs> There's no fucking way. I, my, my, my dude. My dude. I've seen people keep alligators. I've seen people keep tigers. I've seen, I've seen people keep monkeys as pets. Bro, who the fuck? Wants that oh my God, bro. and relatively domesticate them. Nuisance or not, trimmings mm. are a wondrous creature. From their plentiful numbers to their skittish nature, they are truly a thing to behold. Yeah, I, I guess you can the see that. The next species way. on our list is the meat snake. Oh, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, more, there's more, uh, was it that story? During one of their travels, a great storm struck it so powerfully, it swayed above the, of the royal family road and pushed the prince out and into the sea. Huh. So the family, the royal family that we saw earlier, they were known for, like, traveling a lot and discovering new places, and in one of their adventures, in one of, like, destinations, a storm hit and the prince went out so we can see it right here and number two so we can see right here the number of pages so this is page number two so there's gonna be more of this like I I'm still wondering wh what is this about I mean uh what, what does this have to do the story of this prince I mean I'm, I'm, I'm already asking too many questions when we haven't seen anything more so I guess we got to see more to see what happens the meat snake <laughs> the meat snake is a worm-like creature oh, made of a variety of types. Oh, look at, oh, look at that. Oh, so it's an actual snake. It's it's like, ooh, that looks. I am not hearing anyone out. Variety of types of meat coated in a transparent skin-like membrane. Huh. Okay. Its size varies during its lifespan depending on how much it consumes. When it first separates from the crawl, oh. it is only a few centimeters in length. Oh, it looks nasty. Eventually, it, looks like a it will reach an average length of five meters. Although, wow. under extreme conditions, like natural disasters, war, or plague, it can greatly surpass- Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I saw that, I saw that. Wait, this thing can go up to 16 feet. That is, that is, <laughs> that is not that is not no here we go largest meat snake ever discovered during a sweep of an underground settlement made during the war there was a meat snake dis there was a meat a meat snake was discovered stuck inside an underground something the beast measured about a total of 40 meters in length. 40 meters in length! Uh, it, it believed that uh, bodies gathered there during the war were fed to the creature, causing it to reach the unbelievable size? Holy shit! So, this was during the. So, this means that during the war, they would. Bodies would. Oh! This means this thing would eat dead bodies? And it was 40 meters long! No mames, wey! Pinche pepino acá, cabrón, este wey! God damn! Meat snake. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being too fucking childish about it. You gotta understand, it. the fucking name The fucking name is funny as hell. Or plague. It can greatly surpass this length. Hmm. The yeah, meat snake's saw. diet consists entirely of dead animals or parts. A meat snake is incapable of consuming a healthy, 
living organism. Ooh. The meat snake allocates its food by using a tongue-like organ covered in sensors to mm -hmm. touch and feel its environment. The sensors catch particles of decaying meat, notifying the meat snake that there is food nearby. Oh, so it This process not. shares many similarities to regular snakes, hence the meat snake's name. Oh, really? I thought it was called meat snake for other reasons. <laughs> okay, yeah, me call you. Once it locates the corpse, the meat snake will open its jaw and swallow the entire body whole. Once the entire body is consumed, the meat snake's stomach will release a variety of chemicals. Some will break down soft tissue like skin and the connection points between muscles. Others' chemicals will then ferment and preserve the tissue to keep it from breaking down for as long as possible. Mm. After that, the remaining flesh and bones will move along the meat snake's tract and slowly be implemented into its own structure, extending the meat snake. Oh, so the more it eats, the more it, like, grows. Like, anything that he eats, it puts it into his own body. Oh, that's terrifying. So you tell me this thing that eats dead bodies can grow, like, we already saw it, can grow up to 40 meters in length. Wow. Jesus Christ, man. How, how the hell, how the hell do people live with these things around? Like, who, who wouldn't die of a heart attack just seeing one of these things? I would. Like, how the fuck are we supposed to know they 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 aren't capable? So, they're biologically incapable of eating living organisms. But what's stopping them from evolving and basically changing that one day? Ooh, ooh, that's that's ooh, that's terrifying to think about. Now, it also reminds me of a gravoid. Uh, for some of you that have seen movies, some like uh, obscure movies, have you guys ever seen the movie Tremors or like the series Tremors? Like, you might know that the main monster in that series is the Gravoid, which is similar to this, actually. But in, in, the, in that case, the, the Gravoids are, like, blind, and their tongues are, like, snake-like appendages that can, like, feel around and almost, like, you know, like, taste for them. But at the same time, they can also feel, like, vibrations under the ground because they move underground. Oh, that's terrifying. Unsatisfactory parts like skulls, pelvises, hair, and fingernails will be excreted. Huh. Speaking of skulls, the meat snake will take the skull from the consumed organism and use it as its own. Oh. Each meat snake has its own skull, each corresponding to what that one has consumed. Motherfucker, that's a human skull! I am not, I am not dealing with a sentient wiener with a human skull on it. Hell no! No, that is horrifying! So, during its lifespan, it will swap or replace these skulls if needed. Oh, so is it like a protection? A meat snake's lifespan depends entirely on how much a meat snake consumes. The longest one has lived for was 28 years. Hmm. The meat snake has no predators and is immune to disease due to its preserving chemicals. Wow. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. Hmm. Interestingly, it's like a the meat snake is the only member of the Carnies family that is able to reproduce. Really? When a meat snake reaches an excessive size, and is in the conditions to do so, it will commence mitosis, splitting oh. itself in two. Then the now two meat snakes will go on their separate ways and live on as two distinct organisms. Oh. Meat snakes can only be found in moderate temperature climates, not too hot, not too cold. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. So you're telling me that, okay, so it makes sense. They can't be in too hot places or too cold places, only in good places. Surprised the entirety of Mexico hasn't been crossed off. Viva Mexico! But, um, okay, so that makes sense. Like, this area of, like, the United States. You're kidding me? Texas is hot as fuck. How the fuck are they, are they in Texas? Ah, optimal temperature, my ass. It fucking, it fucking snows one day in Texas and the next day is fucking hot as hell. Hell no! Old. Their population depends entirely on the amount of corpses available. Huh. Where there is death, there are meat snakes. Ooh, would they be Humanity in the cemetery? Will use them to our advantage. Meat snakes are a very efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. 
The preserving fluid within the meat snake's body disinfects the carrion, preventing the spread of disease. Wow. Humans use meat snakes in butcher shops as a waste bin, dispose oh. roadkill, within war on the battlefield to dispose of festering bodies and parts, and within zoos to dispose of deceased animals. Oh yeah, sure, 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 why not, you know? Why fucking not? You know, uh, the first thing I love to do whenever I have spoiled meat in my in my fridge, you know, I, you just find that one package of meat you forgot about when you bought groceries that one day. You know, the first thing I think about is like, ah, oh, shit, I have some spoiled meat. All right, all right, all right, let me throw it out. No, 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 no. Actually, why don't I just fucking throw it to the meat snake? Honey, can you please bring out the meat snake, please? <laughs> I do uh, that's horrifying but at the same time genius it's geniusly horrifying how humans can actually like use it like butcher shops that is creatively disturbing Ugh. they are extremely tame not caring if any creature is around them only acting defensively when it is within consuming a meal. This means hmm. they are very easy to tame. Wow. Overall, oh. meat snakes are a marvelous creature with a very interesting way of sustaining itself. No. It is an amazing experience to encounter one, as long as you don't mind the smell. <laughs> I don't think the smell is going to be the fucking problem. The mimic. Oh, fuck. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on a second, I saw that! Here we go. After being stranded at sea, the young prince eventually was cast to an island, injured. The prince stumbled his way into a nearby cave. The prince used what magic he could to put himself into a healing sleep. Huh. So after being stranded and everything, he managed to like... Okay, so this prince also has magical powers? That's kinda odd, this is page 3 too, so we are going in a, in a good order. So, wait, you telling me they're fa the family? You telling me the family didn't care to look for it? Oh, probably couldn't because of the storm. Is their family even alive? Oh, who knows? Who knows? That's interesting, though. I'm, I'm interested in this, too. Like, I, I want to see where this goes to. Is this going to talk about, like, is this, like, something derived from the Vita Carnus? Or maybe even the origin story of the Vita Carnus? That's going to be cool. The Mimic. Oh hell no! The mimic is a bipedal creature. Oh with look at this slender man looking motherfucker, SCP-069 looking ass, fucking. It can be seven foot tall. Bro, Yao Ming and this guy are about to fucking ball in the court. Like hell no. Any similarities to humanoid anatomy? They oh. greatly resemble humans without skin, with added exaggerated features. You don't These features say. These include extended finger length longer limbs, bulging, empty eyes, oh. and their most prominent feature, a wide, teeth-filled smile. Although oh. it resembles a happy face, this is due to coincidence, and is only how their facial structure is shaped. Yeah, no, it resembles a happy face because it's the fucking evolution of a predator. Like, I, 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 ugh, I don't like that. That looks disturbing as fuck, though. But it also looks cool. Like, Mimic. Does that mean it can mimic shit? Like, like, uh, the... I, I'm not, I don't know that much about D&D, but I do know about, like, mimics. Like, they're, like, treasure boxes that can, like, open up. Like, they, they're, like, treasure boxes that, like, lure people in to, like, open, open them up and then, like, they eat people. So I wonder if this is the same thing. And I wonder if, like, the smile, like, it's saying, like, it's, like, coincidental. I wonder if it's on purpose. Like, I wonder if the, the, the creature is doing it on purpose to lure in people. Like, for example, like, um, for example, killer whales, orcas, they, they have evolved to, like, have spots on them. Like, the big-ass spot in their eyes, like, the, the, the white that we always think, like, oh, that's its eye. Like, no, it has a tiny little eye next to it. I wonder if this is, like, a way to, like, lure in prey, making it seem friendly. At the same time, most animals in the animal kingdom, like, are, like, they, they don't know, they don't know what a smile is. They, they don't smile. They see it more as an aggression, so. I wonder why a smile. And is only how their facial structure is shaped. Huh. 
The maw of the mimic contains much more teeth than humans, and their teeth is comprised almost entirely of incisors, with some canine and premolars in the back. <sighs> this is tooth composition is ideal for biting down onto meat, and swallowing chucks whole. So I imagine it only eats A meat? A mature mimic's diet is comprised entirely of human flesh. Oh! Don't look at me like that. Do n because Ugh. of this thing. Ooh, fuck you. So it, it only eats. Oh. Oh my god. So it only eats human meat. That means that. Okay, this part of the of the of the fucking continent is is all right. Most of South America is fucked. Okay. Maybe a little bit of Mexico is okay. Maybe just that little bit but via Chihuahua and Coahuila, but everything else is fucked. Texas, well, I don't know about Texas. Florida is fucked as fuck, so you guys are fucked. <laughs> fuck. Oh, boy, this this. So you're telling me that people just live with this thing roaming around? They are found solely around human populated areas. Huh. The mimic's life cycle is made of three stages. In the first stage, a young mimic separates from the crawl. They closely resemble their trimming relatives, but are thin, oh. sleek, and only have oh. four appendages. In this stage, the young mimic will hunt small animals, moving on to larger and larger as they grow. Once large enough, it will begin metamorphosis into the next stage of life. Oh, like a little butterfly. Once fully transformed, it will resemble the description mentioned in the beginning. Its hunting style... Oh. No! This slender man looking motherfucker. Oh, what the what the Mimic locked inside a home after owner escaped. Photographed by Scenesy Guy. How the fuck did you escape from that thing? I would fucking eat shit and die. Al changes and becomes much more complicated. It now stalks and feeds only on humans. Oh. It will locate human populated area and begin its search for an easy target. To blend in, it may use objects to conceal itself. These oh. include clothing, mannequins, and furniture. So it can, it can actually mimic Once stuff a target like that. Has That's why it's name. The mimic will observe its prey and learn Hello. its routine. Just hiding there in the background. Vulnerable. This is typically when the human is asleep at night. Once the prey is within position, the mimic will advance silently until it is close enough. The mimic will then execute oh, and consumption. Fuck. Once the mimic has had its fill, it will leave the scene, a fair distance away from the human population, and begin to digest its meal. Oh, stationary mimic found outside of town. Although, in the case that a human is awake, a mimic will use a variety of sounds to either lure or... What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? That spooked the shit out of me. You motherfuckers, fuck you. Oh, that was mean. Can kill the helpless target. Oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Light. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's getting fucking closer. Paga la puta luz, pendejo! Oh, fuck no. Oh, no, 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 no. Why aren't you turning off the light and covering your mouth? Oh my god, you're gonna get yourself killed. You're gonna be dead. You're gonna be dead. <gasps> no, 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 no. Oh, hell no. That is horrifying. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh!
Fuck you! The next stage of the oh. mimic's life cycle has two potential morphs. Fuck you! Fuck off, you motherfucker! Oh, fuck! Uh, my poor little heart can't take this! Oh, my god. Maybe my circulation is bad. Maybe I'm dying. <laughs> Alright, let's slide. Let's... Oh. It may develop into. If a mimic has a consistent supply of food, it will develop more human like features. It will grow skin, hair, and by the end will look nearly identical to a human being. Oh. It now can blend entirely into civilization and lure other humans more effectively. So that means that it can just simply, like. So to any other person, they would just simply look like a cannibal. Well, it'd be impossible then, because if they can just- if they already look human-like, and they, like, grow more human-like features, that means that they would just simply- Oh, that's scary. That is honestly scary. Because I, I can imagine that being a problem in society, and, like, to the entire world. Oh, man. The second type of morph happens when a mimic receives an overabundance of food. Does it get it fat? will grow into a larger, oh! more evolved hunter. Its oh! proportions will increase in no, length, no, no. and its humanoid features will fade away. It grows a thick, dark coating of a flexible skin, which is highly durable, oh, and increases in strength the more the elder mimic consumes. No. This no. excludes the face, oh, no. which is now coated no. in a thick... No, you man, no! No, you don't want that! You don't know. No, 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 no. 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 Absolutely not. Pale pink skin. Oh, the mimic's okay. teeth have also moved deeper into the mimic's throat. Oh, like a penguin. Its mouth a toothless grin. Oh, like a sea turtle. It uses the dark hue of its skin to hide seamlessly within a dark environment. Oh. Its skills have also been heightened. This makes an elder mimic one of the most efficient predators on the planet. Oh, so I wonder if it's at the top of Because the of the obvious threat this poses on humanity, oh, nations yeah, around shit. the world have released instructions on how to be able to fend for yourself in a mimic encounter. Here are the instructions. Oh, thank you. Let me know. 1. Avoid going out alone if your location is known to have mimics, or oh, there fuck. have been mimic sightings. 2. Okay. If you encounter a stationary mimic, put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye. Seemingly unfazed by your presence, quietly leave the location and alert your local authorities. Hmm, okay. Three, if pursued by a mimic, get yourself into a position where you are able to flee. Mimics will rarely attack if a person has a clear escape route. Okay. Four. In the event that you have been cornered by a mimic, roll into the fetal position, protecting your neck, face, oh, fuck. and vital organs from attack. I was about to say, I was joking when I said put your head between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye, but I, I, I guess that's close Make enough. Make as much noise as you can to alert any other people. 5. If you have a weapon, do not use it. Excuse me? Eh, eh, disculpa? Me está diciendo que no use mi arma contra el pinche... Contra la pinche bestia acá? No. Absolutely not. If I have something, even it's a fu even if it's a fucking pen, I will fucking use it. If it's not on him, it'll be on me, I'll tell you that. A mimic is fairly resilient, and any strikes or shots on a mimic is not effective enough to bring it down in oh, time. So it's Instead, bulletproof. Use it as a barrier between you and the mimic to block any attacks. Okay, that makes more sense. Six. In a situation where a mimic is hunting in the immediate area and is not aware of your position, hide somewhere low, like under a bed or behind other furniture. What if it's there next to me? A mimic will not linger too long to search for prey and will move on. Okay. Be safe and avoid any encounters with a mimic at all costs. Yes, sir. Next up, the harvester. Oh, oh here we go. More to our story. But the prince's sleep was long. He slept for what seemed like forever. As he slept, the land around him changed and grew. It was unrecognizable for when the prince first arrived. But the sleep still needed time to heal the prince. Much more time. But he kept the prince safe. While he rested, 
guarding him from the elements as the land changed. So is the prince like the first crawl? Because, okay, so I'm, I'm actually trying to think about like this thing, like the prince, the story about the prince and everything. Is this like a type of metaphor trying to talk about like, because it's talking about like how the land changed around him and everything. Is the prince like the origin of the crawl? And like Vita Carnus itself, like that he's the one who like, I wonder if it's like a metaphor for an organism. I wonder, that's, that's interesting. That's really interesting, actually. The Harvester. Okay, the Harvester. Huh. The Harvester is a large, bulbous mass oh. with a large amount of tendrils spreading from the base. Almost looking like a fucked up raspberry. The bulb measures around 3 meters in height and 2 meters in diameter. Wow. The tendrils, that is on the other big. hand can extend up to 150 meters in oh. diameter horizontally. Oh no, that's... The harvester is a specialized form of crawl that grows in a unique and deadly way. A harvester is created when a node that will grow into a harvester, instead of separating, continues to grow. Eventually, it will grow tendrils of its own. It uses oh. the energy provided by its mother branch and expands its reach further. Its tendrils, hidden just below the surface of the ground, so it's like an increased version of the The crawl. harvester is equipped with two types of specialized tendrils. The first type is bulky and flat. Oh. They lie the closest to the surface. These branches are lined on each length of the tendril oh, with spines, like extending in the shape of a bear trap. Oh, on each side there of you the go. branch, those particular spines have a vein that feed into them that pump two types of venom. On oh, one side, like the spines can inject a neurotoxin, which will attack the nervous system of whomever it is injected into causing sudden paralysis. Oh, wow. The other side can inject an anticoagulant, which when injected, prevents blood cells from clotting. So it'll just let you bleed Whenever out. Whenever a large animal moves across the area armed with these tendrils, the branches will clamp onto the animal and thrash violently. Once the prey has been injected with both venoms, the tendrils will rest and the prey will immediately collapse. Oh, fuck. The animal will be unable to move due to the paralysis, and the wounds caused by the thrashing spines will not stop bleeding. All the prey mm. can do is lie patiently, until succumbing to blood loss. Once the oh. prey has bled out, the second type of tendrils come in. They lie below the spine equipped once. These branches are thick, but very sturdy. They okay. share similar anatomy to the small branches of the crawl, equipped with organelle that absorbs nutrients. So that's what picks up These after, like, the These tendrils sense the blood, and move their way to the surface and begin to absorb the vital fluid. Once oh, the blood has been consumed, stuff. the tendrils will wrap around the body and begin to shuffle downwards. This oh. movement loosens the soil and slowly pull the body underground. Once secure, the tendrils will continue to feed until there is nothing but scraps. The wow. nourishment absorbed by the tendrils will be sucked back into the main bulb of the harvester. That this bulb horrifying. houses all the vital organs and the venom glands that pump into the spines. Oh, the nutrients you, are Alistair's then converted Angel. into usable energy. Oh, the that's... remains underground decompose, providing a rich soil, causing very prominent plant growth, which then attracts more animals. Huh. A strange behavior the harvester displays is its choice of diet. The spines oh. will only activate on larger animals, allowing smaller ones to pass by unaffected. The oh. spines will also not activate on some species of bird. There are a couple theories as to why this happens. One, it could energy. be that attacking smaller animals would cost too much energy for what there they get go. in return, making it not worth the time. Yeah, that makes sense. Another, could be that smaller animals may attract larger animals or predators, allowing a safe place where prey may thrive, and lure more predators. Oh, it truly is so astonishing. Smart. It is smart Although as it is hell. a spectacular creature, it is also very dangerous. The really? harvester is decently rare, only populating sparse areas in the northern hemisphere and woodland forests. Hmm. If you are stunned by a harvester, there will be no way of helping you, being that there is no cure, and fatality is 100% positive. Oh! Oh, there is something there, there was something there, I was just about to talk, but there is something there. Here we go. Family attacked by harvester while hiking. Authorities refuse to handle the harvester. Oh, okay. So this is it's so it's a really like it's a problem. 
it's actually a problem. Oh, that's horrifying. So this thing, I, I was just about to like, uh, pause and like, give some comments on that. So this thing, the harvester, just simply, it's like a living, like, it's a living bear trap. It's a living, like, bear trap. It's almost like a Venus fly trap, but on steroids. Like, this thing can cover an entire area just to feed on its thing. And that's, that's honestly a really smart thing. It's honestly really interesting that it doesn't, like, feed on small prey. For, like, for example, like, some types of, like, predators won't, like, go after small animals. Because they want to preserve energy. So it makes sense that this thing e either doesn't want to like eat small animals because it either brings more carnivores in or because it just simply it couldn't be bothered. That's really interesting and really cool too. That's really, really cool. The best thing you can do is avoid encountering a harvester in the first place. Oh, good fucking luck. If you were hiking. Take note of any warnings or signs saying that there are harvesters around. If you also notice an abundance of lush, ground-dwelling plants in a forested area, and there are no signs of wildlife, that could be this anywhere. is suspicious and you should leave the area, staying close to the base of large anywhere. trees or rocks. Okay, that, that makes sense. If you find yourself in the middle of a harvester ground, do not panic. Oh, Some good movements fucking may luck activate with that. the tendrils and will inject you. Although a harvester is rather forgiving, do not risk any skittish movements. Remain calm. Mm -hmm. If you have any objects with considerable heft, like coats, backpacks, or full water bottles, gently take that object and lightly toss it towards the bulb, and away from your escape route. This will activate the spines on where the object lands, distracting the bulb for a moment. You will mm -hmm. then slowly begin to do wide shuffles away from the bulb. If possible, Throw another object when you are certain you are a fair enough distance away, just to be safe. Hmm. Continue until you are completely sure you are out of harm's way. You may come out unscathed, but don't be too obnoxious, or you will be a harvester's next meal. Oh gee, thank you. Next up is... The Host. The Host. Oh, here we go. Let's let's see our next panel comic, our uh, panel of the story. Oh, here we go. Outside the cave, during a time of hardship, little critters? The island critters, the critters... Okay, wait, hold on a second. The critters were struggling and were using... There was barely any food to go by, I, I guess that says. They would go and gather whatever they could. Huh. Wait, is this talking about humans? So wait, is... Hold on a second. That's actually pretty interesting. So, is um, so the, I've I've been theorizing the prince is maybe some type of like, like primordial like form of the Vita Carnis, and that's what caused like flora and fauna. Is this talking about like humans? Is this like humans like uh, like back back then, like millions of years ago, like humans that uh thousands of years ago. Sorry, not m millions, but thousands of years ago is like. Humans who basically like started out first or like animals or like any type of like living creature back then that like barely could survive Is this talking about like them and are they gonna interact or in some way? That's mm, Okay, that's that's interesting. That's really interesting. Let's see. Let's see if we can find any more of those The host of influence host of influence Imperium Carnus the host of influence more commonly oh. referred to as the host has its name derived from a host who invites guests to an event. Oh. Not to be confused with a host, a harborer of parasites or disease. Oh, okay, so what, it invites you to a party? The host is a semi-humanoid looking organism. It has the structure of a head, torso, and arms. Other than this, no it shares no other characteristics. It's like a xenomorph. The lower half of the host is comprised of a mass of fibrous tissue and tendrils that burrow into the ground to hold the host in place. Hmm. Instead of skin, the host is covered in muscular tissue fibers, tendons, and veins. Okay. In some parts of the body are covered in a meaty plate, used to cover any large exposed areas, but allowing movement. Hmm. The host's head has a smooth surface where the face should be, attached to a crooked neck, which houses a slit in the front used for feeding. Oh, what is it? Oh, please On don't tell me humans. is a mound of pores. Protruding from these pores are a hollow hair-like structures, 
extending outwards. These hairs are barrels that release spores produced within host's body by being fired into the air. These Ooh. spores are hazardous, so keep clear of them at all costs. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Was this was that something? Oh. That was weird. It was just a ball. That was weird. I guess it wasn't nothing. It was, it was just a ball. Oh. Luckily, the host is rare, only found in North America. North America, okay. Obtaining info about the host is a very risky and daunting task. This is because of their rarity and of how dangerous it is to be up close to one. Just put on a gas mask, duh! The source released <laughs> by a host is very dangerous when inhaled. A host will release a cloud of spores into the air, which will be picked up by wind and carried great distances. If an organism inhales the spores, the particles will find their way into the organism's brain and infect them. Oh, what does it do to it? An infected organism will show no symptoms of infection right away, but a couple hours after infection the infected organism's behavior and thought process will change. The first mm. symptoms that appear are restlessness, sluggish movement, numbness of joints, and lack of coordination. Then more serious okay. symptoms appear over time. These include dizziness, migraines, impaired speech, and trembles. Mm. If you or someone you know show these symptoms, contact poison control or emergency services. Is there any cure to it? After a total of six to seven hours after infection, the organism will cease all activities they were previously doing and begin to walk. The direction the infected will oh, walk is towards the host whose spores have been inhaled by the infected individual. If the infected makes their way to the host, oh. they will kneel down in front of it, expose their vital organs, and the host will promptly gut and remove those organs. The host will consume them and discard the leftover scraps. Oh, However, so if an infected organism doesn't reach the host within a 36-hour span or is treated for their infection, the effects will wear off and return back to normal. Oh, so it's a temporal thing. If a host is unable to find prey or doesn't like its current location, it will unroot itself and move to a new location. <laughs> it was just... Their scarce numbers... Oh, only, only known photos of a living host. Photographed by Anonymous. Oh, that's risky to do, bud. That's really risky. I wonder if that's the person we saw that was walking. Oh, that's horrifying. These are monsters. These are full-on monsters. Like, at first it was all like, you know, wow, and all this, like, creatures and stuff. But now it's just monsters and shit. Ooh. And the hazard of being around one makes getting info about the host very daunting. All you need to currently know is that the host is extremely dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. Makes sense. Next, the monoliths. The monolith. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. Although, one day, the critters found the cave while searching for food. They found a prince in a trance in a he in his healing sleep. The critters were the critters were so awestruck and enhanced by the prince's magic. Huh. Okay. So is this like talking about humans discovering like the Vita Carnus for the first time? That's odd. And also, is this like a little recording thing? Or is that just a red ball? Or is that, does that have to do with the next creature we're looking at? The monolith? Don't know. It's, that's interesting. The monoliths. Colum Carnus. The monolith is a very new creature, only oh. showing up in June of 1972 in the okay. area of. Oh, okay. There are only seven monoliths. They don't want us all of them monoliths. located in a circular position, one and a half kilometers in diameter. This oh. ring of monoliths surround. Well, they really don't want to The monolith this. is a titanic sized being, measuring roughly 120 meters in height. Holy Each shit! Each monolith has two Holy trunk legs shit. that are firmly embedded underground. The legs connect to a torso. The creature Ooh. itself is made of hundreds of thousands of meaty strands, tightly woven together to form the structure. These strands end at the neck fusing into a solid mass of hardened flesh in the shape of an upside-down triangle, with a hole in its center. On each side of the monolith where arms would be, there are dozens of long, rope-like appendages. These That's... reach just barely to the ground. That's disturbing. At the creature's feet, 
The strands go deep into the earth and extend horizontally a decent distance I love this away. Art. I love this art that implements into like real life. What the pictures. monoliths do is simply stand oh, and do nothing. That's the only that... activity documented that the monoliths have done was in Ooh. during this period they, really they were extremely aggressive. When the group of <laughs> were making oh. their way to the city. The monolith that they had passes roared a deep bellow and the swung its appendages at the team, completely wiping them out. When military vehicles were dispatched, once they got close enough to the monolith, it roared another call, this time releasing an EMP blast, completely wow. knocking the vehicles out in the vicinity. Finally, long distance rockets were fired and struck the creature. Oh? Siren head looking ass. Although oh, damaged, that it actually regenerated made my skin at great crawl. speed and resumed its stance unscathed. Eventually, the area has been fenced off and is now restricted to all. Ever since, the monolith stand silently. Now only a grand spectacle of awe and mystery, only adding more questions to these meat beings. Hmm. And finally, the last creature on this list is... Oh. oh, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, last story, wait, wait, hold on, last story before we end, I guess. Wait, hold on a second. Here we go, here's the final story, I guess, page number seven. Um, the creatures did something something and ask, who is this creature? Why are they here? Are they dangerous? Are they dangerous? A thought was brought up. What if this creature could use its magic to help them? It, huh? Wait a sec. It may grow food or heal sickness. They continued to argue about the prince and his magic healed and the ma what? The critters agreed that the prince would, and huh? can't read the rest of it because it's all like the little like glitchy effect is all on but so the, the so to, to get to the point of it the creatures basically argued like what is this thing should we like use it for good like is it even like good is it dangerous what is it so it is it is like humans interacting with like vita carnis it is like that because like they're thinking about like they're looking at it they're like wondering like is it good is it bad could we use it for food could we use it for healing Huh. That's interesting. So I was right. So it is like humans interacting with Vita Carnus for the first time. Also, that all weird glitchy thing about the new thing, the little like, I think it was a circle. Earth? Is it Earth like that thing? Let's check it out. The singularity is an orb comprised oh. of a dark colored mineral with hints of luminous colors within its core. The singularity is estimated to be several unique qualities that are not well understood. The singularity typically can be found suspended in air by an unseen force. There are also a variety of reading that have been documented coming from the orb itself. Oh my god, this is disturbing as hell. It's just like a little another. circle. and majestic oh. world that exists today it's as extraordinary to have such strange and mysterious beings appear all around us oh that's the story. thank you for oh, joining was... us on this journey of exploration and discovery of the lives of these living meat creatures oh you're welcome i i guess oh more to come yeah indeed there was there was more to come Holy shit, guys. <laughs> oh my god, that last segment was creepy. <laughs> god damn, that segment was creepy as hell. That was... 
Ooh, man, that was creepy as hell. I actually liked that a lot. That was actually pretty disturbing. So, okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. We gotta go back and see this a little bit. So, wait, the singularity. The singularity, basically, so it's just a dark thing. It's just an orb. And we, we don't know what that much about it because, like, there's literally nothing about it. So, imagine, like, the government, just like they wanted to cover up the monoliths. I imagine they don't want anything about this coming out. I imagine this is the only photo known about it. Huh, so there's literally nothing about this. Verum Carnus. That's it, the singularity. Is this like the prince? Could this be like the origin of the Vita Carnus? Cause like the could like the Vita Carnus come from this? Oh, that's that's interesting, guys. And I guess we don't have any more stories, I guess. I guess. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Holy shit. Well, guys, oh my god, this has been a long... I'm sorry for the long video, but wow, this whole thing is pretty damn cool. I gotta say right now that the whole, like, theme, the whole, like, like, um, concept of Vita Carnus is by itself already a magnificent idea. Like, like, the theme itself, like, this organism that just appeared and then it has its own, like, way of living of integrating itself into life and everything i think that's so creative and i honestly i gotta get props to darion like this has been really really cool and really creepy too and that's not it this is not it there's more there's vita carnes cook at home kitchen cheese crawl penne cook along huh there's almost a trimming care guide the meat snake specimen <laughs> anyway um mimic defense instructional tape and they mentioned that briefly Spe species anomaly report and wait wait hold on these two too flavor enhancer and message oh we we see a little bit of like the monolith right there huh well i w that's all the time we have today for like this video right now but if you guys want to see more of vita carnis and you want to see me react more to it like like this like the, the the trimming care the meat sink the message if you want to see me react to all of that stuff leave leave a comment down below Give a like to this video, and hey, maybe even subscribe if you'd like to see more, and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified whenever we all, whenever I upload a new video. And also, don't forget to check out um, Darion over here. Check out their series on Vita Carnus. Also, they have other videos of like speed painting and doing some art here and there. But at the same time, check out Vita Carnus by yourself if you don't believe me of how good it is. Check it out. It's really creepy, and you're in for a terrifying like experience. Honestly, this has been really really cool so check it out give props to him he's also on twitter check him out but for now though thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for watching i really appreciate your time i hope you all enjoyed this different you know type of con of like content that i just put out i really hope you guys like it it's something different i wanted to try something different so let's see if it works out or not so thank you so much for watching this video guys i hope you all enjoyed this video and i hope you're all having a wonderful day slash night thank you so much Bye!